It's not enough that you are present. If you want to experience what it is that God has made available, then expectation and desire needs to rise in your heart. Expectation and desire. If you are trusting God that God will heal you, if you are trusting God that God will send his word of deliverance to you, then let your heart be prepared to receive from him tonight. And we trust that the Lord will do us good in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will do us good in the name of Jesus. I want to salute my brother, Pastor Dr. Miracle Omage, God's servant, the point man, Remnant Christian Network, Calaba. I salute you, sir. I know that RCN Calaba has been prayerfully preparing for this meeting, and I know that God will show us mercy tonight. I salute all the men of God and the women of God on the altar. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate God's servants that are fellowshipping with us tonight? Before we go into the word of God, I will teach for a few minutes and then we'll begin to pray. And then God will do miracles. God will impart. God will release his grace upon people. But before we begin to do all that tonight, I want you to stretch your faith a little bit. And I want you to go to God in prayer tonight and say, Lord, if you are going to visit anyone on this field tonight, I want it to be me. Open your mouth and talk to God quickly. Speak to me. Touch my life. Flood my space with your grace and your glory. Do not allow me to live here the same way I came. Open your mouth and talk to God quickly now. Quickly now. Quickly now. Quickly now. Quickly now. I beg you, don't just look around tonight. Don't just look around. Bring yourself to the meeting tonight. Bring yourself to the meeting tonight. God is already prepared to meet with us. The question is how desperate are you to receive from him? The Bible will say that the Lord was moving through the seats of the streets of Nazareth, through Jerusalem, through Galilee. And the power of God will be present to heal, to save, to deliver. And then only one person will be able to break into that atmosphere and receive of the Lord what is available. It, there is a difference between what is available and what you have the ability to make yours. You can make what God has released into this atmosphere yours. Open your mouth now and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord quickly. Say, Lord, I am here. If there is somebody you will touch, let it be me. If there is somebody you will deliver, let it be me. If there is somebody you will heal, let it be me. I am ready for an encounter tonight. Lord, I am ready for an encounter tonight. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. I can't see people praying. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I didn't come here just to mark time. I didn't come here just to fulfill all righteousness I came for an encounter I came for an encounter I came for an encounter Lord open the heavens over me I cannot live here the same way I came I cannot live here the same way I came send me your word heal deliver me anoint me Embrace me with your presence, Lord, 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 Lord. Somebody pray. Asabara kabos ida baria na kabeleta. Sababa baba baba ya kabosa. Aliandos mani barate shaka barata ete barada barakos Lord I am desperate tonight I can't go back home with this pain I can't go back home with this challenge I can't go back home the way I came It's a festival of signs and wonders Give me a sign make me a wonder Release upon me your grace. Manifest your power. 
I don't want to hear the voice of a man. Speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. Oh! Oh! Young lady, pray. Young man, pray. It's a night of the supernatural. Jesus will do us good tonight. You spoiled principalities, Jesus, Jesus, by your word, you established authority, oh Jesus, Jesus the righteous. By your blood, you spoiled principalities. Call him Jesus. Jesus. Call him Jesus. Jesus. By your word, by your word, you establish authority. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus the righteous Call him Jesus 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 You will reign over all Jesus 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 Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, we are here trusting you, O oh God, that you will look upon us with mercy. Let no life escape what it is you have ordained to do tonight. Lord, even those that can't make it to this field where they are hearing the sound of our voices, let them also be immersed in supernatural experiences. Lord, tonight, save the lost. Heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. And by any means necessary, Lord, don't let us live here the same way we came. Holy Spirit, move upon this field such that the name of Jesus is glorified. And the name of the Father is highly exalted. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for what you do tonight. In Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed. Can you clap your hands and give God glory tonight? Hallelujah. So you join me in 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Colossians, you may be seated quickly. You may be seated. 
Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. We are reading from verse 12 to verse 14. Thanks be to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Remember that the theme for our meeting is sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Every time the Lord begins to lay the emphasis on sounding the alarm in the spirit is because we have entered into a season where there is a crisis. Every time the alarm was sounded, if you go and do a study of the scriptures, when Israel came out of Egypt, every time the alarm was sounded, it was for certain reasons. Either it was a call for an army to rise, or it was a call for a solemn assembly, or it was a call for the people to become conscious of what it is that the Lord wanted to do at a certain time or at a certain season. While I try to engage the Lord to ask him, what is it that you want me to tell your people in, in Calabar? He said that the alarm that must be sounded on this first night of festival of signs and wonders is the alarm for a solemn assembly. The alarm for the people of God to become conscious that Satan knows that his time, he doesn't have a lot of it. So he's working extra hard to guarantee that as many as possible, we follow him to become victims of what the Bible calls the second death. If you are a student of the Bible, you will know that there are various kinds of death in the Bible. The Bible speaks about physical death, which is the first death. The Bible speaks about spiritual death. The Bible now speaks about what he calls the second death. Because physical death is the first death. Then the second death is everlasting death. Spiritual death, on the other hand, has to do with our separation from God. Physical death has to do with the end of life. End of physical life. Every mortal upon the face of the earth will suffer physical death. We may not know the time. We may not know the hour. But every one of us, whether we are on this field or we are in our houses or we are walking down the roads, every one of us has an ordained date, an ordained uh, 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 timetable, an ordained activity with death. We do not know when. But a death is going to meet every one of us at an appointed time. You will come to a day in your life when you will no longer be able to breathe in oxygen. Physical death is a guarantee for every mortal. Except Jesus comes while you are still alive. Except Jesus comes tonight or comes anytime soon and you are still on the face of the earth. Only then will you escape physical death. But as long as Jesus tarries, every one of us has an ordained appointment with death. Our bodies will become tired. Our bodies 
will give up and man will go into the earth. Every mortal has an appointment with physical death. When you speak about spiritual death, every mortal born into this world also is born spiritually dead. Every mortal that comes into the world is spiritually dead. What is spiritual death? Spiritual death is the consequence that man suffered on account of Adam's sin in the garden. Spiritual death is disconnection from our source that is God. Spiritual death is the inability of man to be able to find fellowship with God who is holy. Spiritual death speaks about the corruption that man now suffers because Adam sinned in the garden of Eden. So every human being that lives upon the earth, as long as that mortal has not made peace with God, that mortal is spiritually dead. As long as that mortal has not been reconciled to God by the instrument of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that mortal is spiritually dead. That mortal cannot relate with God. That mortal cannot have fellowship with God. That mortal does not have capacity to call God Father. In God's original design, man was supposed to be an offspring of God. That is why when you read the book of Luke and you look at the genealogy of Jesus, when he begins to show us the bloodline of Jesus, when he gets to Adam, he says, Adam, the son of God. Adam had no human parents. Adam was not the product of sexual intercourse. Adam did not have a physical father or a physical mother. Because by God's design, Adam was supposed to be in the class of God, born of God, to live like God upon the face of the earth, to be a representative and a representation of God in the visible realm. But when Adam sinned, Adam died. The Bible says that the Lord said to Adam, in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. But the day Adam ate, Adam was still walking around. Adam still even had strength to go and sow fig leaves to cover his nakedness. Because Adam did not die physical death. Adam died spiritual death. And what was his spiritual death? His spiritual nomenclature, his relationship with God became destroyed. Satan became the spiritual father of man. Satan became the governing authority over man. Satan became the controller general of man. Man broke his relationship with his father God and turned his back against God and pledged allegiance to Satan and his wickedness. So every man born into this realm, even when they give birth to a baby in the hospital and they are jumping and dancing and say, look at a newborn baby. In the realm of the spirit, what they are carrying in their hand is spiritually dead. Alive physically, but dead towards God. Alive in the natural realm, but dead spiritually. Man died spiritually. And the consequence of that death is that as long as a man is in this realm, Satan is the father of such a man. The man is dead spiritually. Dead. This is why when you get born again, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, that as many as believed him, he gave them power to become what? If you are here, what did he give them power to become? I can't hear you say sons of God. I can't hear you say sons of God. He gave them power to become sons of God. But that's not where I'm going. He says born not after the will of men. Born not by blood. Meaning that when you get born again, your birth process 
It's not natural. You are not the product of sexual intercourse. You are not the product of a man and a woman meeting. It's a spiritual birth. So the Bible says that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Everyone born of the flesh is Adam. Everyone born of the spirit is Jesus. Man died spiritually. And as long as man is dead spiritually, his spiritual authority over his life is Satan. Satan controls the way he thinks. Satan controls the way he lives. Satan controls his destiny. He cannot escape Satan. He's spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. This is why where we read in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says that what Jesus came to do is that he delivered us from what? The power of darkness. He delivered us from the power of darkness. And then he transferred us to the kingdom of his son in love. He brought us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Salvation is a transfer from death. Salvation is a transfer from darkness. From death to life. From darkness to light. That's what salvation is. It's a transfer. Why is it a transfer? Because every mortal that lives in this realm is spiritually dead and under the government of Satan. I came tonight to tell you whichever area of your life is still under the control of darkness. Tonight, Jesus is going to shine his light. I said Jesus will shine his light. I said Jesus will shine his light. Tonight, many will be delivered from the control of darkness even unto the power of God in the name of Jesus. If you are the one I'm talking to, stand on your feet, wave your hand and shout Jesus. I can't hear you. Shout Jesus that embarrasses the devil. Shout Jesus. He transferred them from the kingdom of darkness. So anyone that has not yet been transferred, anyone that has not yet been delivered, anyone that has not yet been set free, the Bible now says such a person will suffer what is called the second death. The second death, the Bible tells us, is where people who rejected God in this life will be thrown into the lake of fire to spend the rest of their lives there. Eternally, that's eternal death. There will be no opportunities after then for you to be able to repair what is damaged. After then, there will be no opportunities for you to make peace with God. Once you have become a candidate of the second death. It means that a final note has been written on your life. The way the individual lived in the physical realm. Has already determined. How they will end. Whether you die before Jesus comes. Or you are still alive when Jesus comes. Either way. If you have not been saved from spiritual death, if you have not been reconciled unto God, the Bible is clear. You become a candidate of the second death. Where men will be cast into the lake of fire. The Bible says in that place, there is perpetual tears. In that place, there is gnashing of teeth. Why are people gnashing their teeth? They are regretting. Oh, if I had known when I had the opportunity in life, I would have surrendered to Jesus. Perpetually, throughout, the Bible says a fire that never goes out. A fire that is consistently burning. Men will be screaming in pain. Women will be crying out in agony. Children also 
will be weeping. No age group will be free. Every man who had opportunity in the visible realm to renounce Satan and refuse to. When the curtain is drawn on this life, there will no longer be an opportunity. Tonight is a solemn assembly. Why? Because there's a crisis in this generation. A serious crisis. Whether it is with unbelievers, whether it is with believers, there is a crisis. God has been reduced. Men no longer fear God. Right now, people can do anything for money. Young people are killing for money. Young people are stealing for money. Young people are giving their bodies as sex instruments just so that they can have money. There is a crisis in our generation. The fear of God has been removed. Look even at our politics. People can become leaders and they can steal and steal and steal and steal. Nobody fears God anymore. Even those who claim to be Christians, they live as Christians in the public, in their secret lives. All kinds of things have become the way of life. There is a crisis. As we begin the festival of signs and wonders, God begins to say, man of God, my son, go to Calabar and announce the great one. He has looked upon his people and judgment is about to come heavily. Judgment is about to come heavily. In, when we speak pidgin English, we normally say this life, no balance. My brother, the life, you no know, balance for here. But when we die, the life goes most balance. People who think that they are cheating God now and they are enjoying life now, if you, do, you are not delivered and you do not come under the government of God while you are alive, on the last day, when the great one looks at you, he will not be looking for your identity. He will be looking for the mark of Jesus that you bear. You'll be asking questions. Has this one come under my government? Is this one my child? When he finds that the person has refused to come under his government, he's not going to send you to hell because he's wicked. You'll be going to hell because you rejected his love. The fear of God is gone. The fear of God is gone. God now has been taken for granted. People live immoral lives. Live lives that they cannot even, they are not proud of in their secret. But when they walk on the road, they pretend as if what they are living is something that people should envy. So there are dead men that are walking around in suits. Dead women that are getting pregnant and married every weekend. Dead parents giving birth to dead children. They are physically healthy. They are robust. They drive good cars. They eat good food. They have admission in university. But when the Lord looks at them from heaven, he said, this one is a dead man. Dead men in shop right. Dead men drinking pepper soup. Dead women lying on the bed having sex with dead men. Because they have not started smelling like rotting dead bodies. They are still wearing gushy perfumes. Still brushing their teeth. So they look as if they are prospering. I came to tell you tonight that one day is coming when the light of God will shine. And the dead spiritually, it will become obvious that this one is a dead man. When God comes to save a man, what he gives to that man is life. 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 That is the, the, the commodity of salvation. What Jesus came to market is life. Not miracles. Not money. 
Not a bank account. Not promotion in your office. Not a car. What Jesus came to market from heaven is called life. I have come that you might have what? I can't hear you. That you might have what? I have come that you might have what? And have it how? Abundantly. It means that before Jesus came, it was not possible to have life. Men are walking around enjoying themselves even as we're on this field now there are people that are with boyfriends and with girlfriends if you go and meet them and say this life you are living is somehow they will tell you i cannot come and kill myself let me enjoy my life oh god what you have is not life it is death you are a dead man the only thing reason you don't know you are dead is that you have not started smelling like a corpse because the death you have died is a spiritual death. And the smell of your death is in the spirit. Satan knows you are dead. Angels know you are dead. God himself knows you are dead. It is only you that does not know. In some cases, some Christians are even envying dead men. Christians who have received the life of Jesus. Who claim to be sons and daughters of God. Some Christians are envying dead men. Oh God, I've been serving you for 10 years. Look at me. But look at that Yahoo boy. He just started doing Yahoo. Now he's prospering. Ah! You are envying a man that is dead. Because he drives a Mercedes. You are a finished person. Dead men can eat ice cream. Dead men can marry. Dead men can have good jobs. But none of those things are the merchandise of Jesus. What Jesus came to give man is life. What Adam lost in the Garden of Eden was life. And because he lost that life, sickness could now take over his body. Because he lost that life, demons can now oppress him. Because he lost that life, sin has become his master. When you read Genesis chapter 4 and verse 7, the Lord began to speak to Cain. He said, oh Cain, why is your face downcast? Why are you looking as if you have been rejected? Why are you looking as if your life has ended? Why are you downcast? If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And God gave him counsel. He said, sin lieth at thy door. And the goal of sin is that it is seeking to master you. It is seeking to rule over you. It is seeking to destroy you. But you must determine that you will rule over it. You will rule over it. I came tonight to tell you that what Jesus came told me to come and offer to you tonight is life. Bro, will you not receive life? Dear sister, will you not receive life? The Bible says, giving thanks unto God. Giving thanks unto the Father who had made it possible. For us to become partakers of the inheritance of the saints where? In the light. Jesus, by his death, he qualified every human being. Because he died as a man. The Bible says he made him who knew no sin to become sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to wave your hand and just shout Jesus. I can't hear you. Shout Jesus. One more time. Shout Jesus. He said he became sin. He became a man of sin. Um, he bore sin in his body. Not that he became a man of sin. He bore sin in his body. So that we, it will be possible for us to bear righteousness in our soul and in our spirit. He became sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
What I came to announce to you, if you attend this festival of glory and you do not contact life, what a waste. And you see, even people that are dead can receive miracles. It's the mercy of God. But you see, miracles do not guarantee your entrance into the throne room of God. What gives you permission to be able to do business with God and to call him father is that you must bear the same life that he bears. He made him who knew no sin. Sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks unto the father who has made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. What is the inheritance? It's not more money in your account. It's not a breakthrough. It's not a, an open door. The inheritance is life. Somebody shout life. I can't hear you shout life. That's the inheritance. And where do you receive the inheritance? In the light. Not in darkness. In the light. So when God transfers you from darkness into light, then it means that your location in the spirit has changed. And once your location in the spirit has changed, then God will now impute into you something called life. Your spirit will come alive. You will now be able to call God Father. Satan can no longer come to you and say you are my child. You are a slave of sin. You are a slave of immorality. You can look at Satan and say that girl has died. She has received new life. That boy has died. He has received new life. Because I have come into the inheritance of the saints in the light. First John chapter 3. You start reading from verse 8. The Bible says, he that practices sin is of the devil. I want you to open that scripture in your, in your Bible now. Quickly, go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. If you are getting blessed tonight, shout hallelujah. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. Let me find it. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from when? Are you with your Bible? The devil has sinned from when? The beginning. The beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. So what is the works of the devil? Is sin. The way Satan and his demons used to oppress people is that he brings them into the arena of darkness. Once he can make them a slave of sin, then he can destroy their destiny. Once he can make you a slave of sin, he can destroy your future. Once he can make you a slave of sin, he can make you the enemy of God. That is Satan's agenda. He knows that he's already God's enemy. But he doesn't want to be God's enemy alone. He wants to make as many men as possible to also be God's enemy till they die. So Satan has his own kingdom. It's a kingdom of darkness. God has his own kingdom. It's a kingdom of light. In the kingdom of darkness, men are slaves unto sin. In the kingdom of light, men are slaves unto righteousness. In the kingdom of darkness, men are oppressed by demons. In the kingdom of light, the Bible says you have been called unto glorious liberty. Somebody shout, Jesus! You are called into glorious liberty. You are free from sin. Free from death. Because anyone that practices sin... Is of the devil. What does it mean to be of the devil? It means that devil is the person's father. Your spiritual father is the devil. He controls how you think. He controls how you live. He controls how you operate. He controls your life. And the biggest weapon of the devil is sin. It's not witchcraft. It's sin. 
as powerful as witchcraft, divination, and sorcery is, the Bible says that a curse without reason cannot even rest on a man. A curse. Somebody can stand in their divination chamber and begin to create an enchantment and incantations. The Bible says when the incantations begin to roam in the spirit, they'll be looking for a reason. If they cannot find a reason, they cannot operate in your life. What reason does Satan use? He uses the potency, the power of sin. And I am sad in these recent days. I lie on my bed and I weep. If I had my way, these remaining days of December, I will not even be preaching. I feel a burden in my heart to just lie before the Lord and cry for my generation. The biggest weapon of sin in this generation is sexual immorality. Men are sleeping with men. Women are sleeping with men. Fornication with women. Fornication and adultery is everywhere. Sex has become so cheap. Pastors are sleeping with female members. Pastors are even sleeping with male members. A young man sat in front of me in my office, weeping like a baby. Weeping. When he went for teenagers camp, it was his pastor, his pastor, that introduced him to homosexuality. In teenagers camp, In my city, a man of God invited another man of God. The woman that he attached, part of the protocol team, there was a female from ministration. The man of God began to sleep with the protocol sister. He came to preach to God's people. In the night, he was servicing himself with the sister that was available. Sexual immorality has become the weapon of Satan in this generation. Even those who speak in tongues cannot stop masturbating. Even those who attend church, there are people on this field now, I can literally touch it. I can touch it. Pornography has a yoke on your neck. You are finished. And you know the, the thing about this generation? Christianity has become like acting. Anybody can climb the stage and begin to speak in tongues. Meanwhile, they are like the Pharisees that Jesus described. You have washed the outside with soap and water. But inside is like a tomb full of dead men's bones. Pornography, sexual immorality wants to finish a generation. We are in the south-south. Go to all our south-south states. The God of sexual immorality has been exalted. In Calabar, you do caravan, I mean carnivals. That breast is on display on the streets. Naked women on display on the streets. And you think Satan is joking? He's introducing a generation to a strange spirit. You enter into our south-south states. When you are a man of the spirit, you can literally touch the demon of immorality. It's available. Men are falling. Some of you that are seated here, some of you that came to school in University of Calabar, when you came, you were, you, were pure, you were pure. You were consecrated. But look at you now. What has happened to you and Jesus? But because we can see speaking tongues, we think that everything is okay. There is an alarm in the spirit. Let him that name it the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Christianity is not a jamboree, it's not a joke. It's a call to purity, a call to consecration. The days of pampering people. Hey, come and accept Jesus now. We are counting to ten. We are waiting for you. If you like, don't accept him. If you refuse to accept him before you die, I assure you, you will not need a man to preach a message to you. You will regret it. Without doubt, you will regret it. You will wish that that first night of festival of glow of signs and wonders I took my, my, my life seriously and I ran out to say Jesus come and be the Lord of my life we must stop playing games as I preach to unbelievers tonight I also talk to believers on this field how long 
Will you continue to panda between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. If your flesh is your God, then be bold to serve it. Stop playing games. Christianity is not a joke. How can you have received the life of God and yet this your eyes can still look upon nakedness? There are sisters that go to fellowship from boyfriend's house. My mother was in a terrible accident while I was in the festival of glory. Satan looked for a way to dampen my spirit by all means. My mother was walking on normal ground. Normal ground like this. Normal ground. And then she twisted her ankle. I've seen people twist their ankle before. I've never seen this kind of consequence. Satan was so mad. He wanted to break my heart. Because immediately the thing happened. Headache from the top of my head. I began to feel so much pain. The anger translated to so much pain. I've never seen that kind of injury from twisting your ankle. On normal ground. She didn't fall from a height. She was walking normally on the ground. She fractured her bone in three places. As I speak to you, they needed to screw iron. At least eight screws to hold the bone in place. But that's not even the story. I want to bring her to my house. So one of my sister-in-laws now said, there's a lady I can recommend for you. So I began to probe. Who is this lady? Say, ah, she's in our church. She's even in our choir. Oh my God, she's a child of God. I said, okay. I began to probe further because my heart was not at peace. Say, well, the only thing. Somebody said the only thing. I can't hear you say the only thing. He said the only thing. Is that she's living in the house of a boy. That she has not married. So they will fornicate. And then she will come to church. To sing in the choir. They will fornicate. She will walk about saying that she's, she's bearing the name of the Lord. You don't know that there is an alarm in the spirit. You will begin to hear. Of what Satan is doing to people. That have refused to take their stand in God. We are playing games. Because God does not kill people. The Bible says the Lord is rich in mercy. So we touch in immorality. People are touching sisters' breasts and still bearing the title of a preacher. Sisters are coming from boyfriend's house to come and rule and sing in our fellowships. And we are wondering why God has not invaded our generation like he did in the days of Benson Idahosa. We are wondering why are we praying so much? And it looks as if Calabar is not changing. Before God will change the territory, he will change the people. If he cannot win the people, how will he win the territory? If the people refuse to change, who will he use to win the territory? The war of territories is not the war of angels. It's the war of men that have been consumed by spirits. Men possessed with the Holy Ghost. They are the ones that can man the gates of territories. But right now we have gatekeepers that are fornicators. We have people claiming to name the name of the Lord. And they have refused to leave Babylon. He said come out from amongst them and be separate. Tonight is a night of separation. Before we pray for the sick. Before we cast out devils. Before we ask the Lord to come with fire and with thunder. We must ask ourselves. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? David fell into the trap of this generation. He began to envy the wicked. He was comparing himself to the wicked. God had to come and warn him. David. Do not envy the wicked. They are like chaff. When the wind comes, they will be blown away. Young girls are ashamed of their virginity now. Because it's more popular to be a harlot than to be a, a girl of virtue. Young people are under pressure to live immoral and lawless. Lawlessness. First John chapter 3, when you get home, read it. It says lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. We don't live without rules in this kingdom. There are principles for relationships. There are principles for, for work. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. And you are stealing diesel from the office. Stealing company money. And we just want to come into the presence of God. And shout hallelujah. 
You think you are dealing with a devil that is careless. Everything Satan does is precise. He knows he has but a little time. He wants to take as many men as possible. I read a scripture some years ago and I sat down and I said, God have mercy on me. The Bible says that when the man of lawlessness is revealed, that he will make an attempt to deceive even the very elect. That means that some who claim that they know God in the day of tribulation, they too will be deceived. If you don't take your walk with God seriously now, in those days you will find that there's too much pressure. Only hunger, hunger. You are saying I must do Yahoo. Person not go feed die. Hunger is better to enter into heaven like this than to sell your soul to Satan. Satan is a terrible master. And I can tell you he's a terrible master because I am a brand plucked out of the fire. Oh, what Satan wanted to do in my life. Oh my God. Every time I sit down and I, sometimes I weep. Lord, thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you. What Satan wanted to do in my life. I'm the one that was homosexually abused in body house. I am the one that house girl was abusing in my mother's house. I am the one that when I entered into university, I became the number six man of a confraternity. I am the one that was sleeping with women as if women were about to go out of fashion. I am the one that drank alcohol as if I was about to become a fish. But just like Paul, when he pleased the Lord, who had fashioned me from my mother's womb, he brought me into an encounter. Satan wanted to finish my life. I don't know who is listening to me. I came to announce to you, Satan cannot finish your life. Do not allow Satan destroy you. Because for Satan to destroy you, you must partner with him in that destruction. If you don't partner with Satan, Satan has no authority. Stop partnering with him. He had delivered us. That's the word that kept ringing in my spirit in my hotel room. He had delivered us from the power of darkness and into his marvelous light. Into the kingdom of his dear son. Tonight, what the Lord wants to do is that he's waiting for those who will run to him and say, I want to be delivered. I'm tired of being under the control of Satan. I want to be free. I'm tired of playing games. I want to be free. I'm tired of covering my death situation with a fine dress and a fine suit. I want to be free. This first night of Festival of Signs and Wonders, it's a night of freedom. It's a night of deliverance. And the first entry point into your deliverance is something called salvation. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Whether you are in your house or you are on this field, you can be free from immorality tonight. You can be free from pornography. What you need is to touch life. You can reject Satan. Tonight on this field, you can look Satan in the eye and say, you are not my master. You don't control my destiny. I will no longer allow you to determine my end. Satan had determined my own end. He had concluded that I would be useless. My God, my God. Have you read Proverbs chapter 6? I think it is verse 26. It says that a harlot reduces a man to a piece of bread. My God. When Satan wants to make somebody's life useless, he will introduce you to sexual immorality. Imagine a grown man 
He's walking around in town. Yet, when, when spirits look at him, they see bread, a loaf of bread. A harlot, immorality, reduces men to bread. He says, an adulteress, she feasts upon his life. She feasts upon his life. You think you are enjoying sex and you are fornicating and committing adultery. You don't know that a demon is eating your destiny. It's the easiest way to become useless in this life. I know what I'm saying. But tonight, when I begin to make the call, wherever you are, you can run to the field and say, Jesus, I am tired. I want life. I want to be free. But adventure, you are in a badly backsliding state. And immorality has finished your life. You are a Babylonian dressed in Zionist robes. We look at your robes, you are a Zionist. But when we look, when, when the eye of the immortal looks at you, he sees a Babylonian. Consumed by sexual perversion, the corruption of the root of the love of money, immorality, all kinds of things. You can cast off the pretense tonight and say, I want life. I want to be free. I want to be free. The Bible says that when God translates us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of his dear son in love. There's a young man I need to speak to tonight. Jesus loves you. You don't know how much. There's a young lady I need to tell tonight. It doesn't matter how far you have drifted. If I can be standing here holding a microphone, I assure you, you have not done half of the things I did. Yet, the great one brought me. He washed me with his blood and gave me a new name. Some people who listen to me, some of my old schoolmates, they will reach me later and say, Kesiana, how did you become like this? We knew you on campus. What happened to you? My testimony is simple. I found life. I'm no longer a dead man. I found life. You had he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. But he made you alive. Young lady, you are not beyond repair. Young man, you are not beyond repair. In the kingdom of light, the way God woos us is by his love. The way he conquers us is by his love. The Bible says he has brought us into his banqueting hall and his banner. The sign of his conquest over us is love. He loves you. The question is, will you reject his love again tonight? What is it in sin? What is it in death? What is it in immorality that you love so much that you will turn your back on the love of God? What is it? I, I, I tell you for free, every enjoyment of sin is temporary. I will never forget one of the times when I was now beginning to pick myself up slowly slowly and I had a relapse and slept with a sister oh my god I know how I wept I know how I wept I wept and wept and wept and said oh god show me mercy and the only thing I kept hearing in my spirit is that Kesena if you are serious with me I will be serious with you I will be serious with you tonight the Lord wants to call people. He wants to call you out of immorality. Call you out of enslavement of sin. Satan is a bad master. He will finish your life. The day of my matric, when I got so high, I wanted to sleep on the road. Satan wanted to make sure that I had no testimony. But look at me now. Look at me now. Just because I determined, 
I may have been a terrible person before. But if Jesus is true and he's not a liar, he says, if I touch life, a transfer will happen. He will move me from the government of darkness to the government of light. In his love. I want you to tap somebody by your side. Say, Jesus loves you. Come on now, don't be afraid of the person. Look them eyeball to eyeball, bro or sister. Jesus loves you. Preach to the other person. Say, you do not know the extent. Preach to the other person. You do not know the extent that Jesus is willing to go just to save you. 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 If you know the extent he went to save me. Even when they were threatening me. If you leave the confraternity, they will do this. They will do that. They will do that. I say at least when I joined the confraternity, everybody knew that I was rugged and blooded. If you come for me, I will come for you. This time I won't come with, for you with a, with a gun. I will come for you with a radical fire of the Holy Ghost. They threatened. But I made up my mind, if death is the end, I would rather die serving Jesus than go back to my vomit. The Bible says that there is a proverb in the land that the dog goes back to his vomit and the pig that has been washed goes back to wallow in the mud. What kind of proverb is that? Do you want that to be the story of your life? Do you want that to be the story of your life? He says when he has brought us into the kingdom of his son in love, he says in him, Omar Akade, in whom, who is whom? Jesus. We have redemption. Even the forgiveness of our sins. God redeems us. What does it mean to redeem? He buys you back. Jesus had to pay a price for your life. He took his blood as currency and went into the deep places of darkness and said for Angela, for Ekaite, for Ungozi, for Kesiena, for Miracle, for Ufot, for Ubong, I have come. This is the token. I know they sinned. I know they were bad people. But here is the token of my blood. From today, they are no longer your own. The Bible says he made an open show of them. Triumphing in it. He took the handwriting that was written against you and he nailed it to the cross. And when he nailed it to the cross, he stood and he declared, he said, you are now free. You are righteous. Who dares bring a charge, a condemnation against God's elect? It is God that justifies. In the court of law, Satan can no longer accuse you because when you appear in God's court, you appear under the blood. He no longer sees you. He sees Jesus. But tonight, if you've not come under the blood, every time you appear, the devil will continue to say, look at this fornicator. Look at this thief. Look at this adulterer. Look at this liar. But I present to you redemption, which is the forgiveness of sins. Wherever you are, bow your heads tonight. Bow your heads quickly. Begin to talk to the Lord. Have mercy on me. Where you are seated, I'm not telling you to stand now. Have mercy on me. Don't wait for me to do the altar call. While I was teaching, some of you, your hearts were burning. Begin to run to the front. I want to be free. I want to be delivered. I'm tired of covering my debt with a suit. Wherever you are, begin to come. While you are praying there, there are some of you that need to come. I don't know why I keep seeing the number 15 in my spirit. That means that on this field tonight, I will not be praying for less than 15 people. You are not born again and you want Jesus. Begin to come. Where you are, hearing the sound of our voice, 
you are in your house I'm going to count to ten you can run to the field I want Jesus I want Jesus I'm tired of being Satan's slave come now come now I saw the number 15 you will not be less than 15 he sent me from the ninja delta sent me from worry because of you don't allow satan waste your life don't allow him steal your future don't become a piece of bread on the bed of a harlot oh here I am down on my knees again surrendering all surrendering all oh find me here Lord as you draw me near I'm desperate for you you I'm desperate for you oh I surrender I surrender I want to know you more I want to know you more I surrender I surrender I want to know you I want to know you more I surrender I surrender I want to know I'm waiting for you come If you are hearing me, come from your house. I'm waiting. You are the reason I came. I'm surrender. I'm surrender. I'm Wanna know you more? I surrender. There are five of you I'm waiting for. Where are they? Come. Come now, come. Don't hide. If you are coming from your house, you can still make it here. I'm counting to ten now. I'm waiting for five people. One. I want to know you more. I surrender. Those of you in front, begin to talk to Jesus. You know where you need his help. Renounce the devil. Reject him. You are not God over my life. Immorality, you don't rule me. Number two, I'm waiting for five people. Number three, I want to know you. Oh, 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 oh. keep singing. for four more people I saw that number five as I wanted to pray come Satan you don't own me number five Tonight is a night of deliverance. It's a night of...
of freedom come quickly oh my god i don't know if that lady is already here i don't know if that lady is already here i'm seeing a lady in my spirit the one you are fornicating with is a man in ministry he's a pastor he's a pastor and you are sitting there God wants to show you mercy you remember that the preacher from what he said it when Satan will finish with you you will not like the end God is giving you opportunity to set it right now to set it right now I'm going to count to five quickly those that need to come come quickly one two I can't wait anymore three come quickly four five those of you that are in the congregation rise on your feet and begin to pray now wherever you are begin to pray now tell the Lord let your power come upon me tonight for healing for deliverance change my story change my story change my story i beg you pray don't look around open your mouth and talk to god those of you in front confess to him tell him where you have heard tell him where you have deviated my god look at the young lady she's broken she's in tears there oh my god oh my god you don't know what is happening here God is restoring man he's restoring man if you don't help me where else can I go nowhere nowhere if you don't heal me where else can i go nowhere nowhere if you don't touch me save me Lord those of you in front I'm giving you time to talk to Jesus don't be shy nobody is listening to you I see some of you crying don't be ashamed of your tears it's between you and Jesus and I will run to you Lord I run to you Lord. the rest of you there Say, Lord, let your power come upon me tonight to heal, to deliver, to transform your power, your power. strange appetites are leaving your body there are those of you in front a mighty deliverance is happening holy ghost holy ghost there is one amongst us that you want to put your fire on in this place in front here lord as a sign lord let it come let it come the baptism of fire the baptism of fire let it come Holy Ghost, I run to you, Jesus. Now listen, there, there's one of you in front. As we were praying, I saw that the Lord put his hand upon you. He put his hand upon you. He put his hand upon you. He put his hand upon you. Holy Ghost, help me find that one. As a sign, as a sign, as a sign. Thank you, Lord. There's a lady that I see that the hand of God will come upon now. 
the hand of God will come upon her now. He will come upon her now. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. The Lord is telling me that apart from restoring you, He's sending a fire, a fire into your belly, a fire into your belly. Lord, help me find out your daughter. Help me find her. Help me find her. Let it come strong. Let it come strong. Let it come strong. Let it come strong. I see that lady in the spirit. I see that lady in the spirit. I see that lady in the spirit. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Help me touch her. Help me touch her. Yes, you have touched your sons. But you tell me there's one lady. There's one lady. There's one lady. She can't resist it. Let it come like fire, like fire, like fire. Like fire, like fire, like fire. Like fire, like fire, like fire. I want it to burn. I want it to burn. Let it come upon her like grace. So that she knows that what she lost has been restored. The lady I speak about, there's a spiritual gift that you lost as a result of your deviation. I hear that it is seeing eyes. Your dreams used to be clear, but all of a sudden, Mara Baba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Help her, help her, so she doesn't hurt herself. Holy Ghost! Wherever you are, keep praying. The power of God is going to come upon people tonight. There are some of you, spiritual gifts will be activated. There are some of you, the Lord will release fresh anointing. There are some of you, healing, healing. You will be healed tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, I present your sons and daughters before you. Some of them giving their lives to you for the first time tonight. Some of them are being restored from their backsliding state. Lord, I commit everyone into your hand. And I ask that you would begin a new journey with them now. That wherever Satan had hold, wherever he had control, that dominion, that government is broken. That wickedness of the wicked is destroyed. I open them up onto a fresh lease of life. As I pray now, as I pray now, as I pray now, as I pray now, let there be an injection of the life of the Holy Ghost. Let it come, let it come, let it come, let it come, let it come. Let it burn within their vessel. Let it burn away every appetite of immorality, every appetite of masturbation, every appetite of pornography, every weakness of the flesh. There is a quickening happening in your belly now. It's raw, it's raw, it's raw, it's raw, it's raw, it's raw, it's raw. Holy Ghost. As they have spoken into your ears, as they have confessed, as they have asked for mercy, I ask tonight that they be brought into the kingdom of light again. That they be shielded from the activity of darkness. That Satan, I serve you notice. These are my brothers and sisters. Jurisdiction here. They are bought with a price. You have no right over their lives. From this day, they begin to rule and reign over sin and the Lord quickens them. So shall it be in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Those of you in front, rise on your feet. Look at me, look at me, look at me. If they can rise, allow them rise. Young lady, what I said, I did not say to excite you. The Lord is going to restore a spiritual gift. I saw it come upon her. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Those of you in front, listen, listen. This is the very, very difficult part. You may not believe it. The bill of wickedness that was written against you, the Lord has taken it. But for Satan to come to you again, he needs your partnership. He needs you to partner with him. The way you refuse to partner with Satan is through discipline. Discipline. There's a commitment that is required to begin your spiritual journey. Once you begin with commitment, you must now sustain your journey with consistency. That consistency is discipline. So as you are living here, there are things you need to delete from your phone. There are relationships you need to scatter. Jesus will not do that one for you. There are things you need to tell yourself, I'm not going there again. I'm not watching that again. I'm not engaging in that again. Once you begin to say it, then the Holy Spirit on your inside will begin to help you. 
and I know his grace is sufficient. Where are the counselors, please? Where are they? Okay, please just go that way. Just go that way. Just go that way. We want to take your details. I know some of you have been born again before. You are rededicating your life. Just go, just go. Let them know. If you are just giving your life for the first time, tell them. If you are rededicating your life, tell them. So that they know how to attend to you quickly. Ah, those of you in the congregation, you've stopped praying. Talk to the Lord quickly. I have just about 10 more minutes. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord quickly. Say, Lord, I will receive power. Let your power clothe me tonight for healing, for deliverance. For healing, for deliverance. There are some of you, you are not engaging in sin, but Satan is using the wickedness of your, of your bloodline to limit your life. Tonight you become an exception to the rules. Woman of God. Woman of God. Can I pray for you? Come. Come on, keep praying. Keep praying. This is how I operate. I just saw the Lord giving you a gift. Just hold my hand. I just want to agree with you. Oh my God, oh my God. Lord, you brought her to this meeting for this encounter. Let the oil drop. Open her up. This staring that I see upon her. She's an oracle of your voice in the spirit. Lord, let the prophetic oracles come strong. Let it come like oil. Let it come like oil. Let it come like oil. Uh -huh. The Lord is putting it upon you now. It's coming like fire. It's coming like fire. Take. Yes, take. Take it. It's yours. Seeing eyes. Hearing ears. Fire that burns within your belly. It's fire. It's fire. It's fire. Help her. Help her. It's fire. By your side. Oh, la barabai. Wherever you are, shout Jesus. I can't hear you. Shout Jesus. As you are shouting, we are asking the Lord to invade this place. For the third time, shout Jesus. For the fourth time, Shout Jesus! Don't be quiet tonight. For the fifth time, shout Jesus! Come on, shout Jesus! This last time, I want you to shout it from the top of your voice. The power of God will come upon individuals. I see young men and young ladies here. God will clothe you. break yokes and then he wants to heal the sick I'm not trying to entertain you Holy Spirit you just showed me that there are two in this congregation that there have been limits placed on their lives by wickedness Lord can you move in your mercy from my right to the left from the back to the front to the choir stand to the minister stand help me find those two individuals that Satan has put a limit on their lives let that yoke break now. I say let it break now. I say let it break now. 
I say let it break now. There are two. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Help me identify them. Ushers, once the Lord puts a hand upon them, help me bring them. I need to lay hands on them. I want to release them into their new season. That embargo is being lifted now. It's a festival of signs and wonders. God wants to make you a sign. He wants to make you a wonder. The anointing is coming now. I see them. There are two. There are two. Holy Ghost. Let it come strong. Like fire. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Strangers, hear my voice and they come out of their hiding places. You are a stranger in that atmosphere. I command that demon, loose, loose, loose. I said, loose. Your destiny must be set free tonight. Your destiny must be loose tonight. Thank you, Father. Just be still if you can. Let me see if I can find those two people. As it pleases the Lord, then I'll move to the next thing. Holy Spirit, let the anointing come strong. Let it come strong. Let it come strong. That's one. Bring the person. Para paru sapakai. Where's the second one? Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. It's heavy. Bring them to me. You've been limited for too long. I'm opening you to destiny. Oh! I see a young man in the spirit. What destroyed your father? That same thing has been coming for your life. But I'm speaking to you now. I'm speaking to that young man now. Holy Ghost, help me anoint him as a sign, as a sign, as a sign, as a sign, as a sign. There's fire all over this field. I'm seeing chains on people's legs breaking. I command it break. I say break. I say break. Please move them close to me so I can touch them. I'm opening you into a new... Young lady, is your season. My God. My God. The fire of God is strong upon you. Yes. You are free. That limit is taken. You begin to soar. You begin to rise. Oh my God. Even in your spiritual life, I see new access being granted to you. I see access being granted to you. I don't know you, but I see oil. It's like you are, you are a bearer of the oil. A bearer of the oil. Lord, release it. Take upon you the limit goes tonight. Tonight. I release you into a new season. Where is the young man? That thing that destroyed your father will have no hold over your life. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Where you are, wave your hands, shout Jesus! Right now, put your hand wherever there's sickness. Eyes will begin to see now. Oh my God, the Lord has already healed somebody with photophobia. I see somebody with photophobia. You could not look to the light. Try now, try now, try now. Try now. Every time you look at the light, you feel pain in your eyes. Try now. That miracle just happened. I hear the Holy Spirit that he has healed that eye. That eye. That eye. That eye. That eye. That eye. Put your hand where you need a miracle. Quickly, quickly, quickly. My time is up. Father, in the name of Jesus. Wherever you find sickness. Wherever you find disease. I bind them now. In the name of Jesus. I... See, ear open. If you have a deaf ear, block it with this one. Block the bad ear with this one. Every deafening spirit, you are bound now in the name of Jesus. Every blinding spirit, you are bound now 
in the name of Jesus. Asthma, sickle cell anemia, whatever blood disease, you are bound now in the name of Jesus. I see, yeah, yeah. Every pain in your body, I command it to, to vanish now in the name of Jesus. If you came here with a cane, put the cane aside. If you came with crutches, put them aside and attempt to stand. I command your limbs, your bones to receive a quickening of the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Let every skin disease, every rash be bound now. Let every growth vanish now. I call you healed. I call you healed. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Pain. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, take your seat and check yourself quickly. Check yourself. Pluck the, the, the good ear and test the bad ear. Remove your glasses. Check your eyes. You came here with pain. Check the pain. Chronic waist pain, back pain, wherever there was pain, migraine that followed you to this place. Check now, check now. You will notice there's a miracle. As you find that there is a miracle, just get up from your seat and come here. Where is that person who the Lord healed their eyes? Photophobia. God bless you. Begin to come. You will notice that there's a miracle. There's a miracle. Just check. Miracles are happening. I want to take just five testimonies before I see them. Come, pain, pain is gone, pain. I, I'm seeing somebody that could not bend for some time now. You've been struggling with a serious chronic waist pain. You've taken all kinds of analgesics, taking all kinds of pain relievers. It has refused to go, but as we pray, the pain left you. Where are you? Come, 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 come. Miracles are ha happening. Somebody with ear pain, strange pain in your ear. You woke up and you found it there. And you notice that the ear has been no don't worry stand 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 except you just want to thank god check your ear there's an ear miracle i'm seeing now i'm seeing an ear miracle quickly come i want to just take about five where are you check there are more miracles all kinds of pain have left people's body i feel the anointing on my left hand so i know people are getting healed all kinds of pain have left people's body there's another eye miracle oh my god there's another eye miracle please check your eyes Check your eyes. There is another eye miracle now. It just happened now. Check, check, check. Itching, short-sightedness, long-sightedness, whatever thing in your eyes. Check now. Miracles. Which pastor is helping me here? Man of God, which pastor is helping me here? Miracles are happening. Check, please, check. I want to take five, at least five, before I sit down. Come. Get up from your seat and come you don't need to help me I don't need to be helped just check so that we can take the testimonies this is the first night it will be from glory to glory just in case you could not make it tonight tomorrow night is going to be something else you better be here yes oh my god I'm seeing somebody that had a problem with their throat if it's you check now check you will notice that that thing is totally gone something with your throat your throat area the holy ghost will not be pointing these things to me if they are not here check now there is healed man of god is the ear here ear is Papa, there anybody sir. with ear here no. not yet there's a ear miracle, a hearing miracle that has taken place. I want to, you know, this was the kind of thing that happened in the festival of glory. I kept waiting, but the person just felt they needed to go and check first. And 37 years of ear problem was healed that night. So I'm not, I'm not trying to excite you. I hear these things. And when I hear them, I know God is healing. If you came here with a hearing condition, wave your hand. Let me just pray one more time. Hearing condition. Okay, help me check online then. Help me check online. Because the Lord is telling me he has healed somebody's hearing and ear problem. Yes, what happened there, man of God? Yes, sir. You mentioned a case of photophobia. Yes. Yes, this dear lady said she came here with the symptoms of photophobia. 
deliberately refused to come with her glasses. Wow. When she came, she could not look at the light. But as you mentioned the case and prayed, that she's not able to look at the light without pain. Come on, wave your hands and shout, Jesus. It's like we don't like miracles in Calabar. Come on, shout, Jesus. God bless you, beloved. It will never return in the name of Jesus. You are permanently healed in Jesus' name. Yes, what happened there? What happened there? This brother says he had symptoms of malaria and typhoid that affected his eyes. That affected your eyes? Yes, with severe pains. Severe pains? Yes. But My God. But as you prayed for him tonight, as you prayed over that case tonight, yes. that the symptoms disappeared and the pain is gone, he does My not God. feel it anymore. Somebody stand on your feet and just celebrate Jesus. This is a sign that miracles are happening everywhere. Come on, shout Jesus! Come. You are permanently healed. Malaria is bound. Typhoid is bound. Before you wake up in the morning, your entire system is flushed. God that took away the pain in your eyes, take away, takes away every pain in your body. In Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Severe, severe throat pain. Oh, you are the one I spoke about. Yes. With the throat. Yes. My God. Yes, what happened there? Severe throat pain that refused to go away in spite of several medication and treatment. But tonight, as a prayer went on, the, he can no longer feel the pain. The pain had disappeared. Something's he has come to give glory to God. Something's moving. Something's changing. See his glory. Feels like heaven on earth. Something's moving. Something's changing. See his glory. Feels like heaven on earth. Something's moving. Something's changing. See his glory. Feels like heaven on earth. Come. It will never return. Even the symptoms are gone. You are permanently healed. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Quickly, quickly, let's take these ones. This brother says yes. that he has been having itching on his private part wow. as a result of infection, toilet wow. infection. Wow. But as the prayer went on, he realized that the, the, the itching and the pain has disappeared. Come on now. Feel it again. Come on now. This glory feels like heaven on earth. There is lightning and thunder. Miracles and wonder. Sound of many waters. Heaven on earth. There is lightning and thunder. Come. It's permanent. It will never return. For affliction shall not rise a second time. Your entire bloodstream is purged in Jesus' name. What happened there? Had born for over one month that has refused to go in spite of several treatment. But while the prayer went on, she realized that the symptoms have disappeared. No more pain again. Come on, clap your hands. Give God glory. Come, come. It will never return. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. Yes. Pastor sir, this sister said she had symptoms of severe pain on her ears. Okay. Her ear has been paining her for several times, for a very long time. But as the prayer went on tonight, the pain has disappeared. God never lies. Did, did you hear what I said? Yes. God never lies. There's someone here. There are things God told you. And you are saying that December is about to finish. That the things he told you about 2023 won't come to pass. I came to tell you that 24 days is enough time for God to give you a testimony. If you are the one I'm talking about, jump on your feet and shout hallelujah. Come, come. The pain will never return. Your ear is totally healed. In the name of Jesus. Something's changing. See his glory. 